G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this video is on creating textures for your drawings and illustrations, which is a part of a series that I'm doing on the fundamentals of drawing. So if you're interested, make sure to click the link on the screen and in the description to go check out the other five videos as part of this set. In this video, I'm going to take this hand holding a ball and this ball is, you know, sort of empty and nothing at the moment. And I'm going to create six examples of painted textures on this ball. So this ball will take several different textural forms and uh, I'll just sort of talk about my process and, and uh, some of the things to keep in mind when creating textures for your illustrations and drawings. Now in doing this I'm using Adobe Photoshop and brushes by Kyle T Webster and I'm going to be painting it with sort of like an oil lush uh, and some other textural brushes as well. So rather than going into a huge amount of detail into how I'm doing that in this video if you're interested check out the video linked to on the screen right now which is a video on how I do Photoshop painting. So if you're interested in learning in more detail in how I go about doing that or what I'm doing that's the video to check out otherwise we can just move straight forward and talk about the textural process in this video. Now when I talk about texture we're essentially referring to how light plays on the surface of an object or how an object works with the light to reflect or, or um, use the light for our vision. So for the most part it's how light plays on the surface of an object for example a coarse textured object will have shadows uh, and light reflecting off it differently to how something smooth and reflective will look. So the first example I'm going to do here for this ball is I'm going to do just like a simple blue ball. Ain't nothing as uncomfortable as having blue balls and um Oh god, that got um, immature pretty quickly. I'm using a clipping mask, so I don't need to worry about going over the edges here. And I'm just going to quickly put in some shadows and highlights. Now to get a smooth texture, I'm not going to use any custom brushes. I'm going to use the default Photoshop brush, which has a really smooth sort of, um, what's the word? It's, it's much more gradiented and it's like an airbrush. So in doing that, I can sort of lay down the first layer of shadow. I can add some thicker, darker shadow now and then go into these darker, deeper areas. And bit by bit, I'm building up the realism of this smooth textured ball. And finally, the last layer is the deeper, darker shadows. And I can add some shadows immediately under the fingertips because they're going to be casting some gentle shadows as well. And then last but not least, I can select some lighter color and make my brush a bit bigger and very lightly paint in some highlight. And as you can see, very quickly, I've produced a very smooth ball. So that's the first texture. The first texture is smooth. The shadows and the light work on the surface of this ball in a very easy to interpret and uh, produce way. So for this next texture, I'm gonna do a bit of a coarse texture. Again, nothing too specific, but for this one, I'm gonna be using a custom brush. And the reason I do this is because with custom brushes, you can have different textures sort of added to the brush stroke. So for example, I'm gonna select an orange brush here. And if I make it large and uh, fill in the whole thing, you'll see that depending on the brush, here with this oil, you can see I've got some sort of soft but textured edges. Then there's this watercolor brush, which has a much more coarse texture throughout. So I'm actually gonna use this one and with a rather large brush size, do the same sort of thing, outline the first areas of shadow and have it get darker as it's further away from the light source. And then as we add layers of shadow, continue this process. You can see just by changing the brush alone, we get a very different result with the texture. And the larger the brush is, the more coarse the texture looks. So if I want to add sort of dimples throughout, I can tap my brush and sort of gently add some of these fine coarse points of the using the watercolor brush. This also contrasts with the brush that I've used on the image of the hand already because the hand uses much more of a smooth oil look. So this watercolor dabbled look tends to add a bit more of a textured coarse look that opposes it and makes it look sort of more on its own and sort of makes it stand out more on its own. Now I don't entirely know what this material is meant to be, but something orange and something coarse. So, you know, does the job. <laughs> and now what I'm doing is with a large brush and a high contrast, I'm tapping and adding in these little dimples and you can see it's starting to add and sort of freckle 
these darker spots throughout. And the reason this is useful is because it makes it look like shadow is playing off the surface of the image. And now when I select my highlight, I'm gonna do the same thing, get a much lighter color, and with a very large brush, dimple in some highlights. And you can see that as I do this very roughly, it makes the surface of the entire ball dimpled and freckled and uh, hold that texture consistently. So now when I zoom out and see both of these balls, it's quite clear that the ball on the left is quite smooth and the ball on the right is quite textured. There are imperfections in the shading of this one on the right. For example, there are some darker areas and light areas that don't look completely spherical, but this actually aids and helps that uh, rough coarse sort of look which is really quite cool and, and it holds those imperfections in a way that accentuates that texture. Now for my next texture, I'm gonna do a wood grain. So I'm gonna select a base color for my wood, which will be sort of like a medium chestnut brown. I'm gonna go back to my lush oil brush and I'm gonna start adding the grain. I'm not actually gonna do any shadows and highlights yet. I'm simply gonna do the wood grain. And I'm gonna start off by highlighting how the grain of the wood might act. Now this is a tricky sort of process because this is an orb. Wood grain has a linear sort of consistency, meaning that it goes in a, in a direction. And because this is a sphere, uh, it doesn't go in one direction. It sort of would wrap around because the orb is like a segment so that this wood grain would essentially essentially be heading in the direction of where the thumb is, as if it would be going straight through the fingers and then through to the thumb. So it's straight along here, but then because the sphere is round, that starts to wrap around. So I'm creating that texture to wrap around this wood sphere. These are just the early lines that I'm doing here. Once again, I'm not doing shading, I'm just doing the grain. So I'm gonna move on to a darker brown and a thinner brush, and I'm gonna to start to uh, accentuate some of these grain areas. Now, one of the things to keep in mind with almost all of the textures that we're working with is that imperfection is key. If the things that we're looking at are too symmetrical, if the textures that we're using are too neat, they're not gonna be believable. Whereas if we have chunks of the wood grain that stand out or are thicker than others like that, if we have little dots or imperfections every now and then. We don't want to overdo it, but we can make sure that the object or the grain and uh, texture that we're looking at looks much more organic than if it were too symmetrical. Next, I'm not necessarily doing highlights. I'm just doing the lighter areas of the wood grain. So like I'd done the shadow areas, I'm just gonna go through and add some lighter areas. Now we don't wanna be over the top with these. We can use them sort of sparingly and just make sure that we get that organic look by having some of it highlighted and some of it left more in shadow or in imperfection. Now we can tweak the values of this and I'm making the light areas a bit darker because I think I went a bit over the top with them. And now I can start to add shading. And to do this, I'm gonna select a very dark brown, very, very dark, almost black brown, and start painting in on a new layer, the shadow area. I wanna make sure it gradients well and all that and make sure the, the shadows are in the right places, but I'm not actually gonna use this in its raw form as shadow. I'm going to go over to the layer styles and move down until we get to hard light and that sort of changes the way that uh, the layer style works on it. And I'm gonna add another layer of shadow again, adding some darkness, and this time I'm gonna change it to soft light. And these two layer styles work together to add shadow, but in a way that doesn't exclude and remove the detail work that we've done with the texture lines of the wood grain. And finally, what I can do is select a very light chestnut color and I can select some very fine areas and add some highlights like this. And this accentuates where the light hits and shows that the texture is catching light in the area that the light is most prominent and in the areas that the texture is most three dimensional. We've got to think of the textures as 3D shapes and objects in themselves that they pop out and then have inset areas. So we're working with lots of light and shadow to make sure that they look like they have a three dimensional surface. So you can lower that a bit if you don't want it to be too loud. And the next thing you can do, of course, is add an area of highlight with some shine like this. Now, of course, that's a bit too ridiculous as it is, but what I intend to do is use the layer styles again and flick through until we hit something quite like this. So with this overlay layer style, we start to add a bit of an interesting gloss uh, rather than just a solid hard light. And then of course, we're layer by layer building upon 
uh, one thing after another to add our shines, our textures and our shadows. So that's my wood texture painted on the ball. And you can see how we get that three dimensional wood look while still maintaining the shadows throughout. Next, I'm going to paint fur. So this hand is going to have a ball with fur, some furry balls. And, uh, oh God, grow up, Jazza. To create this effect, I'm gonna go with a bit more of a sandy color because we've got lots of browns. So let's just sort of switch it up a bit and go with something a little more neutral. So sort of like a blonde furry color. And also to do this, I'm going to uh, find the perfect brush. So I'm gonna flick through my brushes and find one that has some hard, edges to it and it so happens that there is a brush called bristle hair and grass which is useful because it has that very liney look so this is going to be really useful because there when i select my shadows and add a tint of red i can sort of sketch in the shadow areas and this is a matter of building it up bit by bit so i'm sort of leading into the center of the ball, but making sure everything goes in one sort of uniform direction so it doesn't look too out of place. We can fill in some, we can fill in the edges to be more solid if we want because we can go even darker and then add another layer of shadow. Bit by bit, we're adding the shadow until we get a bit more of a gradient effect, but obviously it's not a gradient, it's a very coarse uh, way to transition to the shadow. But things are gonna really start popping out when I add the highlight, and this is when I select the blonde color that I was going for, because obviously it doesn't look very blonde at the moment, but with a very strong blonde highlight color for the top layer, things start to stand out a bit more because the, the top most hairs are gonna catch light the most and they're gonna overlay the shadow sections. We obviously don't wanna lose all of the darker shadow textures that we've got. The final thing that I wanna mention in regards to the textures is of course the edges. And at the moment, it's a very smooth edge. So what I can actually do is bring my brush down a bit and add some edges. This is a clipping mask. So essentially by using the same brush texture and just drawing around the edges like this, I'm expanding the area of my clipping mask without undoing or changing any of the paintwork I've already done, but it accentuates that furry texture. And in fact, it really adds uh, to the effect that we're going for. And now when we show the hand holding the ball, we can see that furry effect really paying off there. For our next texture, we're gonna go for a really stony texture. To do this, I'm not gonna go with just a flat gray because flat gray is boring. We're just gonna add a very subtle, subtle hint of orange. But when I say subtle, I mean very subtle. It's just a minor touch of saturation and that will just sort of add a bit of an older look to it. And first things first, I'm just gonna go through and paint the basic shadow. But what I do as I paint in one layer at a time of shadow and have this rough, coarse texture is I'm gonna get a very fine version of the brush and add some detail like this, just little cracks throughout. Once again, the key to this is being imperfect. So not having too much symmetry, having areas with lots of cracks where they're very intertwined and connected, having little dots and rivets here and there just to make sure it looks stony and coarse on the surface. And then having areas where it's gonna be a little more smooth and isn't so oversaturated with cracks and imperfections. This will help make a really natural looking stone texture. Basically, I like to do this layer by layer. So I've done one layer and it's just a subtle shadow section. Now with another level of shadow, I'm going to go through and deepen the shadow throughout the textured ball, add some shadow under the fingers. And now using this brush, once again, very, very small, even smaller than the brush previous, I'm going to use it to draw around the edges of some of the lines I've already done and then extend them into the areas that are a bit darker. This is a bit of a refinement process now because the lines that I'm drawing here are gonna be much finer, but they're also the, the uh, extra shadowy bits of the coarse cracked texture and they're going to really make the uh the rocky texture stand out and look quite nice but once again avoid symmetry have some areas that are obviously more dark and open with the cracks and have it also trail off so that some areas are just fine and not so over accentuated with this brush adding the cracks you want it to be a garnish and not try and make a main meal out of it so to speak once again, I'm gonna add a final layer of shadow, softly accentuating the areas under the fingertips and then at the bottom of the ball. 
And then again, as previously, we carry on these cracks into the shadowy areas of the ball and accentuate some of the other cracked areas. Then finally, we add a layer on top and this time we select our main mid-tone color and go much lighter. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna start off by lightly painting our highlight area like this, but I'm also going to take that and drag it down a few layers so it's underneath all the cracks that I drew. So it actually makes the cracks stand out a little more. Next, I'm gonna get my brush and make it much smaller. And then I go in some of these areas and add an additional highlight to some of the cracks to make it look extra sharp and uh, refined with its cracks and make, it, make them stand out a bit. To show that with the cracks, not only does the darkness kind of go into the crevice of the cracks, but the light hits the edges of the lips of the cracks too. So that's our stone texture. And then finally, the last texture I'm gonna do is a reflective texture. Now, the interesting thing about this is that all the other textures that we've done so far, the wood, the coarse, the rock, and the fur, ignoring the first one, are very uh, coarse and rough, and they directly affect the light and the shadow on the surface of the ball, whereas in in this situation with a very reflective texture, it's not necessarily uh, the way that the light works on the ball, it's the way that the ball reflects the light around it. So we're still gonna have highlight and shadow. And for this, I'm gonna go for a chrome look with a, a very light desaturated blue. Once again, in the clipping mask, I'm gonna paint that in. And this is where things get interesting. What I wanna do is start reflecting the things that are surrounding the ball. So for example, we have the hand. Now this is gonna be a bit tricky because the hand has a bit of an outline and painted style. So I'm gonna try and replicate this by taking my brush and I'm gonna draw lightly a reflection of the hand that's holding the ball. Now the thing about this is that because it's a sphere, it's gonna really warp the reflection because everything really will wrap around it. So for example, for the thumb here, it's gonna show the thumb, but it's also gonna wrap all the way around really quickly. And the edge of the ball here is gonna to continue to reflect the hand all the way around because it curves in and under the hand. In fact, I should probably show a little more of that because the ball sort of goes under the hand. So I'll continue to pull that in and around like this. Now I'm gonna paint the mid-tone over that whole area. And this is gonna to start to feel a little odd because painting a reflective ball uh, is gonna feel like we're not making much sense halfway through. And it's only towards the end that it really starts to come together and make a lot more sense. You'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. But as I fill in that mid-tone, I then move to my shadow tone, fill in the shadows. I wanna gradient it out in the same way that the hands, shadows and highlights gradient out. Speaking of which, now I grab my highlights and paint in the areas that are highlighted. Now keep in mind where they are highlighted and shadowed on the hand itself, because at the end of the day, we're reflecting back what already exists. We're not creating anything brand new really. And that is the beginning of that happening on this hand texture. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is take these two layers and lower the opacity slightly. We wanna make sure that it's still there and nice and strong. But the other thing we need to remember is that the world around this ball is reflected. So somewhere there's a horizon. So what I'm gonna do now is select this darker blue and I'm gonna paint a horizon line that's gonna wrap around this ball shape. But to do this well, I wanna make sure it's really smooth to really complement that chrome effect. So I'm gonna make sure I, I use that real airbrush sort of the look. And then finally, the last thing I'm gonna do is add a layer on the very top and start adding in some shadows for the chrome. So this is gonna be a dark saturated blue. I'm airbrushing it in and it's on top of everything. So this is where the shadow of the object itself overrides the shadow of the reflected things, the, the skin and the horizon and all of that. So it starts off sort of like a medium blue and I'm gonna end up going quite dark. And now I can also sort of roughly paint in some shadows for the whole object. Now the interesting thing about this is that this is again where layer style is gonna be useful. So if I scroll down through the layer styles, overlay is one that's working quite well for what I wanna do. I'll tone it down just a bit and now I'm gonna add a new layer on top with which I'm gonna select a very, very light desaturated blue with a large brush sort of paint a bit of a glowing highlight and not too solid because it needs to cover up quite a large portion of the ball I'll bring down the opacity a bit and the very last thing I'm gonna do is select a solid white and paint in the areas that the light source is in 
And as you can see, the result is then a spherical object that reflects the hand holding it and the world around it, but still has its own gentle color of blue and has a very clean, uh, soft gradiented look and hard highlight. I hope this video has been useful to you, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, as always, the reference file for this video tutorial is in the description. So if you want to break apart how I did all these layers and what the layer styles are and all that jazz, make sure to click the link in the description and you can download this PSD Photoshop file for free. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. You can get the reference files for this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And if you want the reference files for all the tutorials I've ever made, check out the tutorial archive. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.